All right. Well, welcome, everybody. We're going to get started now. Good to see you folks here with us today. Um, we originally started this group. It's been about a week and a half ago, and we continue to grow a little bit. Seems like each time we come together, we come together Monday through Friday, depending on what part of the country you're in, your time will be different. My time in the San Diego area is 10 a.m. Some of you might be 1 p.m. and everything in between. So want to go ahead and share some things with you to be relevant to what we're doing and to help you guys understand what's going on. And it'd be good if I turn my video on to hang on a second here. All right, there we go. Hello, there I am. All right, let me go into my screen here so I can share some things with you guys. All right, here we go. So first thing I'd like to share with you is we have a Facebook group that coincides with uh, what we're doing Monday through Friday. It is the same name as our meetup groups, just without any given city. It's called I Want to Be Really Rich, and I do not apologize for it. Same, like I said, same name as the meetup group. And you can find us by going to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash I want to be really rich. So facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash I want to be really rich. Now, why do you want to join the Facebook group? A uh, couple reasons. Reason number one, it'll let you know more about the group. What I did is I created kind of a welcome video here, learn more about the group and about myself. That way I don't have to spend a lot of time right now trying to talk about that. You can go into the group, watch the video. It is the same video, hopefully, that you received when you signed up. For the meetup group and hopefully you took some time to actually go ahead and uh, watch it. If you didn't though, that's where you can find it. Uh, the other reason is because as you can see as we scroll down there was Friday and there was Thursday and Wednesday and so on and so forth. <clears throat> so what we're doing is we're taking the recordings of Monday through Friday and we're putting them into the Facebook group. So if you want to attend meetings, but you can't make it to every single one, totally understandable. You can go back and go into the Facebook group, find the one that you missed and watch it if you want to. Or if you were attending one that you really liked, uh, you can go back in to review what we were talking about. So wanted to just share that with you. The next thing I wanna go ahead and share with you is what we're in the process of going through right now we will be going through all kinds of different material over time. Uh, we started out, like I said, about a week and a half ago. And it, currently we are in the process of kind of studying and taking apart a book that was written a long time ago called The Science of Getting Rich. You can easily find it in paperback form all over the place, especially on Amazon. You can definitely find it for Kindle um, what I went and did, though, to make it easy for you guys to find a free copy of it is all I did was type into Google Science of Getting Rich and then PDF. And organically, one of the very first searches that came up was from the secret.tv forward slash WordPress, blah, blah, blah. Anyhow, I clicked on that and got a copy of the Science of Getting Rich and then downloaded it. That way, you... I, the reason I'm using this one versus my own Kindle or a paperback or something is so that you can follow along with me and be on the same one if you like to. So I'm telling you where I got mine so you can go find yours in the same place if you like to. Again, just Google the science of getting rich PDF and organically one of the first searches that should pop up would probably start with the secret.tv. And if you've seen the movie, The Secret or read the book, The Secret, Rhonda Byrne is the author of that and the owner of that particular website. And her reason for giving the science of getting rich away for free. Uh, by the way, it's easy to find for free. Why? Because it's a public domain work. It was published by Wallace Waddles originally in 1910. <clears throat> so when it's a public domain work, it means that anybody can have access to it and can you know, turn it into your own book or whatever you feel like doing with it. But Rhonda Byrne was given this book back, was given this book by her daughter. I don't know where her daughter got it, but she was given this book by her daughter prior to having the idea of creating the movie or the book, The Secret. 
And it's because of going through the science and getting rich and stu studying this material and then starting to stu study other things related to the law of attraction that her life changed pretty drastically and so did her finances. So um, definitely an important book for her. I happen to have a mentor of mine that also recommended this book, who's one of my personal coaches, a gentleman by the name of Bob Proctor. I don't know if you've heard of Bob or not. Uh, he's written his own book called You're Born Rich. He's also highlighted heavily in the movie and in the book, The Secret. And he was given this book by two of his mentors uh, years ago, long, long time ago, uh, Earl Nightingale and Lloyd Conant. So Earl Nightingale and Lloyd Conant shared the book, The Science of Getting Rich with Bob Proctor. And Bob Proctor has pretty much stayed the book every day since they gave it to him. Um, and I'm going to say, I know he's been studying the book Think and Grow Rich now for nearly 60 years. Science of Getting Rich, though, I think he's somewhere around, <laughs> not that it's not been long enough, right? But somewhere around 50 years. So a long time studying this particular book, you'd say it's not even a long book. Um, but Bob, I hired him once upon a time and to be my personal coach. And he also trained me to be a coach for his program. So I coached and facilitated for those for a while. Now I'm independent. But I wanted to bring up Bob so that you know where I've got some of my ideas and thoughts and training. He's not the only one, but he is one that I actually, like I said, hired and paid pretty, pretty significantly, being the fact that it's Bob Proctor. Uh, for the opportunity to learn from him. And I will say it's been worth absolutely every penny that I ever spent in the, to doing that. And my life has changed dramatically as a result. My life, I was introduced to the science of getting rich and went to a science of getting rich seminar taught by a facilitator of Bob Proctor. Her name was Leslie Householder, a facilitator and coach for him. And after going through that three days, she gave us a self-study course that was also created by Bob around this material. So I went through a three-day seminar. So we did way more than just go through this book. Um, and then that self-study material, Bob goes way in depth, not just into the book, but into other things. But I took that material over the next 90 days. And so from the period of mid-February, this is several years ago, uh, up until April 1st, well, actually March 31st, I quit my job that I had at the time. I was making between five and six grand a month regularly, quit my job. And then over the ex next eight months of the year, so April through the end of the year, uh, my income, it, it fluctuated, but I took the average over the next eight months and surprised myself that I was $50,000 a month average for the next following eight months of the year. So this book has had a big impact on me too. So I thought I'd share it with you. And another person who I got to work very closely together with, actually a couple people. I don't know if you've heard of Robert Kiyosaki, but if you've heard of, heard of the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, or The Game Cash Flow, you would know who he is. And you may have heard of who was his partner, no longer, but who was his first CEO of his company and his partner in creating the Rich Dad Companies, a very wonderful lady by the name of Sharon Lecter. But I got to work very closely with Robert Kiyosaki and Sharon Lecter, even before um, having Bob Proctor as a coach. And so I've had different experiences, again, other people that have helped mentor. But Robert and Sharon was a little different. They actually brought me on board with them and asked me to help them out in being a consultant to them and helping them grow their business. So I've had the opportunity to help them. And as a result, I think I probably learned as much or more from them as they did from me. And imagine, you know, that kind of opportunity to spend a significant time with these people. Again, many other people who have affected my life, but I wanted to give you that quick summary so you would kind of know why I might be someone that's okay to listen to and maybe you can learn some things from. So what are we going to do right now? Here's how we function. Uh, for the first part of this, we're going to go over a topic. So it'll be different. It could be a book like this. It could be audio or video. It could, it could be anything, I guess, that I feel will help you guys in the idea and in the creation of money and wealth in your life. Okay. Um, so we'll start with that. And then what I like to do is I like to leave somewhere between 5, 10, maybe 15 minutes towards the end so that you guys can share comments, uh, maybe ahas that you've got, um, 
and also so that you can ask questions. So we definitely would like this to be interactive for those who want to interact with us. And that way, again, you could share also if you've got some great experiences related to creating wealth and manifesting money and creating income in your life, awesome. Um, it's not a recruiting thing, so it's not there for you to spam people. It's there for you to share how you've utilized the principles and obeyed the laws that govern the creation of wealth and manifesting money. And you can share what you've done to do that. It's, it's not there though for biz opportunities to say, hey, here's my opportunity. So just kind of want to lay down some ground rules there really quick for you. Um, as far as if you go into chat and you start typing things, trying to ask me questions right now, now is not the time to do that. Well, okay, you're welcome to do that. I just won't be looking at it because it would throw me off track. And that's not something that I want to do right now. So what I would prefer to do is go through this and then we'll have our quick pause and come back to each other. And that's when we can share, interact and ask questions and get answers. So for the moment, if you happen to have chosen to download this particular book that I just shared with you, we are on page 41 of 77 in the PDF. So I don't know if that's the page we're on in the actual book, but if you downloaded this particular PDF file, you're gonna find we're on 41 of 77, and we're gonna talk about how to use the will. I don't know that at least for myself, prior to going through these materials and learning from Bob and others that have taught me, I don't know that I really understood truly what my will was supposed to be used for. I had an idea based upon what the world told me, but I don't think that's nearly as effective as what's being shared with us here. Again, written in 1910, the way that Wallace Waddles, the author speaks, is going to be a little bit different than what you're used to, but follow along and I think you'll be able to enjoy it and get out of it what you need to. How to use the will. To set about getting rich in a scientific way, and remember, this book's called The Science of Getting Rich. Highly, highly, highly recommend that you join the Facebook group and, and go through the, the different, you know, be able to watch the videos. However, if you don't choose to do that, I at least hope you would go find this for free or get a paperback or Kindle copy and then get caught up with this. Because this book, if it's understood correctly, can have a major impact. Okay. To set about getting rich in a scientific way, you do not have to apply your willpower to anything outside of yourself. You have no right to do so anyway. It is wrong to apply your will to other men and women in order to get them to do what you wish done. Okay, You're going to learn as we go through this that you don't need any particular individual to do anything for you to receive what you want in life. You may have to have certain things done, but there's not any specific person that can either make or break you, okay? When you think there is, you get into a competitive thought and you tend to want to try and control other people. Not a good idea. Leave them alone, okay? It is as flagrantly wrong to coerce people by mental power as it is to coerce them by physical power, okay? If compelling people by physical force to do things for you reduces them to slavery, compelling them by mental means accomplishes exactly the same thing. The only difference is in methods. If taking things from people by physical force is robbery, then taking things by mental force is robbery also. There is no difference in principle. You have no right to use your willpower upon another person, even for his own good, for you do not know what is for his good. That's, that's for God to decide, okay? And we are not he right now. The science of getting rich does not require you to apply power or force to any other person in any way whatsoever. There is not the slightest necessary for doing so. Indeed, any attempt to use your will upon others will only tend to defeat your purpose. You do not need to apply your will to things in order to compel them to come to you. That would simply be trying to coerce God and would be foolish and useless as well as irreverent. You do not have to compel God to give you good things, 
any more than you have to use your willpower to make the sunrise. You do not have to use your willpower to conquer an unfriendly deity or to make stubborn and rebellious forces do your bidding. Substance is friendly to you and is more anxious to give you what you want than you are to get it. To get rich, you only need to use your willpower upon yourself. When you know what to think and do, which this book has been teaching us and will continue to, then you must use your will to compel yourself to think and do the right things. That is the legitimate use of the will in getting what you want. To use it in holding yourself to the right course. Use your will to keep yourself thinking and acting in the certain way, which is obeying the laws. Do not try to project your will or your thoughts or your mind out into space to act on things or people. Keep your mind at home. It can accomplish more there than anywhere else or than elsewhere. Same thing. <laughs> Use your mind to form a mental image of what you want and to hold that vision with faith and purpose and use your will to keep your mind working in the right way. The more steady and continuous your faith and purpose, the more rapidly you will get rich because you will make only positive impressions upon substance and you will not neutralize or offset them by negative impressions. Okay, so real quick, just to go back a little bit and give you an idea when we're talking about substance, what's being talked about. Wallace Waddles is gonna say substance, formless substance, thinking substance, intelligence substance. Let's put it simple in terms, little maybe scientific, as far as our day and age, it would be referred by a scientist as energy and or matter, okay? Energy or matter, same base, two different names for the same thing. And matter responds to us. Now, you may not understand how that works yet. Go back and get a copy of the book. You'll get a better understanding because Wallace has already spent plenty of time going through how this is the way it works and showed us how it's true. So substance responds to our vibration. How do we create vibration in the first place? We are intelligence and we have the ability to think and actually to have new ideas. We're not just like most of the animals out there that run off of instinct. We're able to think of something new and go about working to make it happen and create it and whatnot, okay? Our thoughts, will create a feeling. Those thoughts and feelings create an impression into formless substance. And formless substance interacts with everything, anything and everything, not only on this planet, but who knows where else, okay? But it is all interconnected. And when you're putting a thought into that substance, that substance is, again, interacting with anything and everything. And it has the ability to communicate with anything and everything. And it works towards bringing you the essence of that vibration you've created. So if you are currently right now sitting here and you feel pretty good and you're thinking happy thoughts, I can tell you already right now what is on its way to you as a result. If you continue in that process will be something that pleases you. If you're sitting here right now and going, why the heck did I hop on? And what am I doing here? And Kevin's a bozo and this is a waste of time then what will be what will manifest for you is not going to be necessarily something that you want to have manifest for you, okay? But we're talking right now about using your will to take what it is that you want and impress it upon the substance and to do it in a certain way, which is obeying the different laws of the universe, which we've gone into a little bit, but we'll go in more depth as we go further, not just this particular book, but further studies to understand what those are and how they interact with each other. But just understand that the more steady and continuous your faith and purpose, the more rapidly you'll get rich because you'll make only positive impressions upon substance and you will not neutralize or offset them by negative impressions. The picture of your desires held with faith and purpose is taken up by the formless and permeates it to great distances throughout the universe for all I know. As this impression spreads, all things are set moving towards its realization. Every living thing, 
every inanimate thing and the things yet uncreated are stirred toward bringing into being that which you want. All forces begin to be exerted in that direction. All things begin to move toward you. The minds of people everywhere are influenced toward doing the things necessary to the fulfilling of your desires. And they work for you unconsciously. But you can check all this by starting a negative impression in the formless substance. Doubt or unbelief is as certain to start a movement away from you as faith and purpose are to start one for you, toward you. It is by not understanding this that most people who try to make use of mental science in getting rich make their failure. Every hour and moment you spend in giving heed to doubts and fears, every hour you spend in worry, every hour in which your soul is possessed by unbelief, sets a current away from you in the whole domain of intelligent substance. All the promises are unto them that believe and unto them only. Notice how insistent Jesus was upon this point of belief, and now you know the reason why. Since belief is all important, it behooves you to guard your thoughts. And as your beliefs will be shaped to a very great extent by the things you observe and think about, it is important that you should command your attention. And here the will comes into use, for it is by your will that you determine upon what things your attention shall be fixed. That's an important statement there. And here the will comes into use, for it is by your will that you determine upon the things your attention shall be fixed. And if you don't determine that, you are just going to be going all over the place with your thoughts, okay? and you will make decisions that will not please you because the things that you're going to allow into your mind are going to have an impact on you. And if you're constantly filling your mind with doom and gloom, you will receive back the essence of doom and gloom in your life. If you're constantly keeping those things away and nurturing that which makes you feel good, you will actually enjoy the things that come and manifest in your life. If you wanna become rich, this is so important, guys. So, so, so important. If you want to become rich, you must not make a study of poverty. Things are not brought into being by thinking about their opposites. Health is never to be attained by studying disease and thinking about disease. Righteousness is not promoted by studying sin and thinking about sin. And no one ever got rich by studying poverty and thinking about poverty. Think about that, guys. How would you get rich by studying poverty and thinking about poverty anyway? How could that even be possible? Medicine, now think of this, instead of a science of healing, because medicine could be a science of healing and thought of, but unfortunately, a lot of times it's not thought of that way or used that way. Medicine as a science of disease has increased disease. Religion as a science of sin has promoted sin. <laughs> and economics as a study of poverty will fill the world with wretchedness and want. Do not talk about poverty. Do not investigate it or concern yourself with it. Never mind what its causes are. You have nothing to do with them. What concerns you is the cure. Do not spend your time in charitable work. Now, some of you guys might not like this, okay? But it'll be better explained as we keep moving forward, all right? He is not sitting there and he will talk in the future about not being hard-hearted and mean and whatnot, okay? But he's telling you some very important things right now. And also understand this too. If you personally are having trouble or have had trouble in the past or have done well and then things have gotten bad, if you're having challenges with having as much money as you want or as much wealth as you want in your life, this is very important that you understand what he's talking about right here and how it impacts you, okay? I know it definitely has made a huge difference on how it impacted me. So do not spend your time in charitable work or charity movements. All charity only tends to perpetuate the wretchedness it aims to eradicate. So it may not be 100%, okay, because he said all. There probably are some out there 
that actually go about this by obeying the laws and helping people change their thought process will therefore help change their situation, which will therefore help them receive what they want in their life. But that is not how most of it works. And so that's why it says all charity, because basically it doesn't teach them how to think differently, which is the cause of the problem in the first place. Here you go. I do not say that you should be hard hearted or unkind and refuse to hear the cry of need. Okay. But you must not try and eradicate poverty in any of the conventional ways. Put poverty behind you and put all that pertains to it behind you and make good. Get rich. That is the best way you can help the poor. Let's see here. Where are we? I'm just checking time. Okay. I, I want to make a quick comment here too, guys and gals. Here, you know what? I'll save it for after. I'll do it for our commentary time, but it's definitely something that I think is important to share with you. I, I think we'll get through this chapter first and then we'll do that. And you cannot hold the mental image, which is to make you rich, if you fill your mind with pictures of poverty. Do not read books or papers which give circumstantial accounts of the wretchedness of the tenement dwellers or the horrors of child labor and so on. Do not read anything which fills your mind with gloomy images of wants and suffering. Look, everybody, if you don't become rich first before you do these things, studying these things will bring you down. If that brings you down, you will not become rich. You will not increase your income. You will not have more wealth. So how are you gonna help those people that need the help in the first place if you thinking about all the crap that they go through brings you down into poverty too? Not gonna to be very helpful to them. It's better that you learn how to become rich and then share with people how you did it and set the example for doing it. You cannot help the poor in the least by knowing about these things and the widespread knowledge of them does not tend at all to do away with poverty. What tends to do away with poverty is not getting pictures of poverty into your mind. That's why you keep it out. But getting pictures of wealth into the minds of the poor, that's what will help them. You're not deserting the poor in their misery when you refuse to allow your mind to be filled with pictures of that misery. Poverty can be done away with not by increasing the number of well-to-do people who think about poverty, which would actually put, start sending those well-to-do people in the wrong direction. If they thought about it and focused on it too long, they would end up in poverty, okay? But by increasing the number of poor people who purpose with faith to get rich. The poor do not need charity, they need inspiration. They need someone to show them the way. Charity only sends them a loaf of bread to keep them alive in their wretchedness or gives them an entertainment to make them forget for an hour or two. Okay, and those are okay, right? But it is not going to eradicate poverty. But inspiration will cause them to rise out of their misery. If you want to help the poor, demonstrate to them that they can become rich. Prove it by getting rich yourself. The only way in which poverty will ever be banished from this world is by getting a large and constantly increasing number of people to practice the teachings of this book. People must be taught to become rich by creation, not by competition. And we talked quite a bit about that a little while ago. We're talking about creation, not competition. Anybody can become rich in the creative way. In the competitive way, very few will. And those who do are always in fear of losing what they've got, okay? Every man who becomes rich by competition throws down behind him or her the ladder which, by which they rise and keeps others down. But every person who gets rich by creation opens a way for thousands to follow them and inspires them to do so. You are not showing hardness of heart or an unfeeling disposition when you refuse to pity poverty, see poverty, read about poverty, or think or talk about it, or to listen to those who do talk about it. Use your willpower to keep your mind off the subject of poverty and to keep it fixed with faith and purpose on the vision of what you want. 
Okay. Further use of the will, and we will save that for tomorrow. It come out a screen share here. Okay, what do we got? So here's what we're going to do right now. If you guys have any um, comments, if you guys have any ahas, if you guys something stuck out to you by what you read that you'd like to share, if you have experience in manifesting, great. Or if you have any questions, that's cool too. So if you do, what I ask that you do is that you just start speaking and we'll go in order of how we do that. I will keep this going till about 1045 ish my time. So I'm not sure what that is your time. It would have been 45 minutes after we started. After that, I'm going to turn the recording off, call the meeting adjourned. But if some of you still have comments or questions, because it seems like almost every day there are some people that do and want to keep talking, I'll stick around for maybe another five to 15 minutes. But we will call the meeting adjourned and that'll be off, you know, that we won't officially be in meeting any longer. That way, those of you who need to go do something, you can take off and go do that. But if you have any comments, any questions, now is the time to go and proceed. So anybody got anything? I do, Mark. Hey, or Kevin, Kevin, sorry. That's all right. <laughs> it's looking. Um, so uh, wondering if you could provide some further explanation. I remember uh, on Friday, um, you were talking about, you know, like setting affirmations and intentions and um, it, there was a part that seemed a little conflicting to me where you, it, it kind of seemed both ways where you're like, talked about kind of like setting it and forgetting it, but at the same time, not, not necessarily repeating it over and over. Okay. Okay. Is, is that, I don't. I'll try and I, clarify. Okay. Okay. Let Let's get two things a little bit different. Let Let's Let's start with two words. One prayer. Okay. Other affirmation. Okay. If I come to you, um, and you have the ability to provide something for me, okay, Jason, and I come to you and ask for something. You know, I, I send you a message, I text you, I email you, <laughs> Pony Express, <laughs> whatever, right? But, but I send you a message and I'm very clear about what it is that I'm asking for, right? I, it, it's not, it doesn't come to you and you're like, I, I don't get this, what's he want, right? It's very clear to you what it is that I'm asking for and you have the ability to provide it. And you've got things that are going on, but you also have the big picture of how everything interacts. You're the you're essentially the universe, and you're going, okay, cool, got that. And so I'm also listening to, you know, everybody else's messages, what they're asking for, and then I have the ability to put those all together and actually help everybody get what they want. I just need to kind of coordinate all of that. If I send you that message, and you say, cool, got it, and you make and you let me know that you got it. And it, you know, feels, you know, so I get that confirmation. Okay, great. You know, Jason's on top of this thing. He's got this. So, and we have roughly an idea, maybe a little idea when it's going to show up. Would you appreciate me on a daily basis asking for it again? I mean, not, not necessarily before right. the initial date that we thought it was going to be delivered. Right. I mean, you, you would kind of like, I got this thing. I've got the power to deliver it, Kevin. You know, we're, we're good to go here. Trust me on this one. All right. Trust me. I've done this for millions of times for billions of people, billions and billions of times. I've always helped people manifest what they want. You've been very clear about what you want. In the past, you maybe haven't been so clear and you've been all over the place. So I've tried as quickly as you keep putting thoughts and feelings out there to send you what I thought that you wanted. Not that I'm dumb or anything, but I'm this formless substance. I just respond. I'm not actually God. God is a person similar to yourself. God is someone who knows how to do this better than you do, by the way. So if you want to ask direction on how to make this work, ask him. If you want the delivery of the stuff that you want, let me do my job. My job is to interact and bring this stuff to you. But it, for the most part, you don't need to hear it over and over and over. Okay, great. But what's an affirmation? 
An affirmation is more for yourself. An affirmation is a reprogramming of your subconscious mind to start accepting, because you can decide absolutely 100% what you want and still not be 100% in belief and trust and faith that it's going to come. But I don't need to keep bugging you, formless substance, right? Energy matter, Jason. I don't have to bug you on a daily basis, nor should I. And if I keep changing what it is, here's another part. I changed my mind again because I'm really not sure. You know, I did ask for a nice car and I asked for a nice house. But tell you what, give me just give me a car and let me move into that apartment. Okay, well, you took the time to be very clear that you wanted this house and this nice car. But now you're telling me you don't believe I can give that to you, even though I already told you I would. <laughs> so now you said you want, you just want anything that drives and you want to live anywhere with a door and a roof is essentially the message I just got. I think you've been living somewhere that has a door and a roof. <laughs> it's been your parents' door and roof, not your own. So what do you want? You said you want a house and a car. Now you say you want an apartment with a door and roof. You're, what do you want? So I'm going to put this on hold till you figure it out, or I'm going to kind of leave this to, you know what, I'm just going to reflect back to you what you keep telling me. So your life is going to be confusing. Yeah, I mean, you're not saying this to me, but you're like, you know that that's what's going to happen to this person is their life is going to get all jumbled up because they haven't made up their mind what they want. You can utilize the affirmation, though, in a positive way to help program your subconscious mind to be more sure about it so that it's not because it's really through the subconscious mind that I'm communicating with you, Mr. Formless Jason, in the first place, you know. So affirmation, yes, that's good. But pleading with God, oh, please, 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 every single day. If you really have faith that he and or she, however you want to believe God is, okay, whatever, right? If you really believe that God has the capability to deliver something to you, and you got that impression after you asked that, okay, it felt good to you, like God's cool with it. Let God do God's thing, <laughs> right? Let, let the personage of God share with you each time you need to take a step, what step you need to take and let the formless substance also go do its job. See, I don't believe they're one in the same thing because there's the stuff that things are made of and then their intelligence like us Formless substance just responds to us and it responds to the vibration we're putting out towards it. And if we're unclear in what we want, we're putting out this jumbled up signal out there. So, and the other thing that happens is we now put out the jumbled up signal that's out there. We're asking for this house. And then what we hear is, oh, you know what? We were watching the news and hey, because of COVID, these people are losing their houses because they can't afford the payment. So we're like, oh, do I really want a house? <laughs> you know, we, we, we start allowing all this crap to come in instead of thinking about this house is not only do I have it, but it's easy to pay for. Matter of fact, it'll be paid off very quickly or it'll be paid off the moment I receive it. it we, we've got to take the time to decide what we want. And the affirmation can help us do that. Now we will change things that we want. We'll decide some things we don't really want that we thought. And there'll be other things we want that we didn't, okay, that we hadn't thought of in the first place. That part's okay. The main part is, is we want to go understand what we want. Here's what I recommend you guys go do. I recommend that you go to YouTube and type in Steve Harvey 300 list. Now, that may not be exactly how it pops up, okay? But Steve Harvey is going to talk about a process that he went through. And by the way, this was after actually he was a multimillionaire. He went through this process, though, because people that were doing even better than he was said that they went through this. And he said, well, heck, if they did, then I'm going to. And then he started to realize that a lot of times we don't get what we want because we don't ask in the first place. And we don't ask in the first place because we're not, we're not really being confident and sure about what it is that we want. And that's just because we've been programmed that way. But the laws work 100% all the time. We're manifesting every day. Whether we get what we want or not is dependent upon the signal we're putting out. The signal we're putting out is predominantly controlled by our subconscious programming. And our subconscious programming has got to be changed in order for us, 
for it to accept that, hey, we are actually supposed to be rich and wealthy and have a lot of money because there's good reasons for that in our life. So now it says, that's what I need to help you get then. But up until now, you kept saying you want it. But the real message you've been given to me is that being poor and destitute and in poverty or middle class or whatever it is, is okay. Now you're telling me it's different. Well, you better convince me because for the last 20 years, you've been telling me that it wasn't okay for you to be rich. So I've accepted that as that's what's normal for you. Now you're telling me you want it to be different. It's not that very day going to accept it. You got to go through a reprogramming process. The beginning of the book of Science of Getting Rich, as you remember, because I think you've been here since the beginning, Jason, yeah. it is the first two, three chapters are predominantly focused on telling you exactly why it's a good idea to be rich and why it's not, you know, why you're, you're not going to be evil or, you know, if you decide to be rich, it, it tells you what are all the good things for it. The number one reason for it is so that you can become all you can become, do all you can do and have all you can have. Because money is the means of exchange in our society. No money means no stuff. No stuff means no development. I don't mean stuff accumulation. I'm not going to go through the talent one again. I've done that three days in a row. Go listen to the last one we did on Friday or Thursday or Wednesday. when we talked about how you need to do certain things to develop into who you can become. But again, a prayer is a, is a making a definite one-time request of what you want. And then the affirmation isn't, God, please, 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 please. That is you talking to yourself. Is that helpful? Yeah, it's more distinguishable. Okay. Let me give you, what, what do we got on time? We're, we got one more minute. Okay, I'm going to end the recording and then I'm going to share something I think is important. But if you guys got to go, you got to go. But I really want to tell you why I think you need to be rich. Okay. So hang on a second. If you got to go, you got to go. I get that. Um, before, actually, before I disappear, for those of you who popped on late, I'll share my screen again really quick. Really good idea for you guys to look up on Facebook for the group, I want to be really rich and do not apologize for it, okay? Same name as the meetup group that you joined. Come find the group, ask to join it, you'll be welcomed in because this is where we archive the, th the, the trainings we have Monday through Friday, but it's also another place where you can interact with each other. Just don't use it to spam business opportunities and stuff like that, okay? This isn't a place to come like recruit somebody for your MLM or whatever. I'm all cool if you're in an MLM, but people who are like, hey, I can help you become rich, click here, you know, that's not what this is for, okay? We're going to teach you how to think in such a way that you'll attract riches through whatever source God wants to send them to you. But anyhow, please come join us here. All right, and we will turn the recording on.